The next item of business is consideration of business motion number 12330 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out revisions to the business programme for today. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request to speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 12330. Formally moved. No member has asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 12330 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed to. The next item of business is topical questions. Question number one, George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to provide councils with resources to maintain teacher numbers. Cabinet Secretary, Angela Constance. Officer, the Government currently provides councils through the Local Government Finance Settlement with £37.6 million to fund the Teacher Induction Scheme and £41 million to support the commitment to maintain teacher numbers. The Deputy First Minister wrote to all local authorities on 5 February asking them individually to commit to maintain their pupil-teacher ratio and the numbers of teachers they employ. In return for meeting that commitment, the Government will provide councils with their share of the £41 million pounds plus a share of an additional £10 million. Pounds. George Adam. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer. Given the resources now available to councils which commit to maintaining teacher numbers and the fact that the Scottish Government has offered to suspend the penalty they were entitled to apply as a result of the fall in teacher numbers last year, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with Larry Flanagan, EIS General Secretary, who said the fact that COSLA is continuing to resist a national agreement, including the offer of significant new money, is extremely disappointing? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, indeed, President Officer, it is disappointing that COSLA found themselves unable to accept the original offer. Uh, it's a fair and generous offer uh, that has now been made to all local authorities, and I indeed would encourage them to accept. It's important to recognise that the maintenance of teacher numbers uh, is also a condition of the tripartite pay agreement. Uh, teachers' unions have accepted changes to their members' terms and conditions uh, on the basis that teacher numbers uh, will be maintained. Thank you. I have a number of people who wish to ask a question. I intend to call all of you, um, but I want a question. I don't want any statements. Uh, and if you could just come right to it. Um, Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to confirm that when she talks about maintaining teacher numbers, that that is 4,275 less than when this government came to office in 2007? Cabinet Secretary. The offer that has been made to local authorities, uh, Mr Griffin, is to maintain teacher numbers at the 2014-15 level. It is very important to recognise that uh, there was indeed uh, a vast decrease in the numbers of teachers between 2007 to 2011. Uh, numbers uh, since 2011 had been uh, broadly uh, stabilised, although last year there was a small but disappointing uh, decrease. And that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons that since 2011, uh, extra resource and a commitment to maintaining teacher numbers has been part of the local government agreement since 2011. Stuart Stevenson. Given the unacceptable teacher vacancy numbers in Murray, can the Cabinet Secretary advise what contact has been made with the Council to establish why this has arisen and to ensure that they are taking proper steps to address this deficiency? Cabinet Secretary. There is a, a number of actions that can be taken at a local and national level and, and indeed uh, are being pursued at a local and national level. I have certainly had meetings with Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire councils and have been in touch with uh, members who represent uh, the, the, the Murray area. Uh, it is true that in some areas of the country uh, there are uh, issues with teacher shortages, uh, particularly uh, in some subjects. The Scottish Government has an overall responsibility uh, for national uh, workforce planning. Uh, local authorities have uh, duties to employ and recruit teachers. But there's a number of actions, for example, at a national level, for the fourth year in a row we have increased uh, the number of students going into initial teacher training uh, and that has been disproportionately uh, geared towards uh, University of Aberdeen, Dundee, University of Highlands and Islands to help meet uh, those uh, geographical areas where there are uh, shortages. 
And also, at a local level, I know from my discussions with councils uh, that they're using the flexibility uh, in terms of financial incentives uh, and also using programmes like the Delight programme, which the government uh, funds uh, to train up classroom uh, assistants. John Scott, then Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that local authorities such as South Ayrshire Council, who have complied with the Government's expectations and who already have a lower teacher-pupil ratio than required, and who also have falling school rules, will nonetheless be required to employ teachers for whom there will be no job if SEC South Ayrshire Council want to attract their share of the £51 million fund provided by Government. And local authorities Can we get a question, Mr Scott? Well, indeed. Is this fair? If is this fair that they, these local authorities will therefore be expected to subsidise the councils who have not complied with the guidelines? Cabinet Secretary. Mr Scott, I mean, it's certainly fair to say that the government would have preferred to have reached a national agreement with COSLA. I am certainly aware of the diversity across Scotland. In some areas, we have increasing pupil numbers that are quite remarkable in terms of Aberdeen, Aber uh, Aberdeenshire and Edinburgh. Uh, there are other areas of the country uh, in parts of uh, Ayrshire uh, where the school role uh, is, is falling. Uh, I appreciate that there are uh, nonetheless uh, challenges. We will work closely uh, with individual councils, uh, but nonetheless, uh, the offer that is available to individual councils uh, is to maintain uh, teacher numbers at a minimum at 2014-15 uh, levels. We, of course, will have dialogue with any council uh, and are doing so um, with, with regards to any particular issues that local authorities have. Uh, Liam MacArthur, followed by Joe McAlpine, <coughs> and then Cameron Buchanan. Thank you very much, President Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary accept that for those uh, authorities such as Murray, who may already be struggling to recruit teachers, they will not find this task any easier if they are then subject to financial penalties? And does she not agree that the government's divide and rule approach uh, makes national workforce planning and responding to the changes in school roles referred to by John Scott between different local authority areas difficult, if not impossible? Cabinet Secretary. It's important to state to Mr MacArthur that COSLA and the Association of Directors of uh, Education are very involved in the working group that looks at national uh, workforce planning uh, and they have never uh, disagreed with the recommendations uh, of that national uh, workforce planning group and indeed ministers uh, have always accepted uh, the recommendations uh, of that workforce planning group and indeed uh, for the fourth consecutive uh, year have increased uh, the numbers uh, of students going into initial teaching education. I said I, I would have preferred to have got a national um, agreement with COSLA. Um, COSLA were un unable to come to an agreement with the government, um, but I'm sure he will understand that my uh, number one priority as the Education Secretary uh, is to safeguard uh, the education of our children, uh, to maintain attainment and indeed to raise attainment, and in particular to close uh, that attainment gap. And I don't see how that we can make significant progress on closing the attainment gap uh, while sitting back and allowing and uh, teacher numbers uh, to fall. Joe McAlpine, followed by Cameron Buchanan. Thank you. This morning, the Fries and Galloway Council announced a U-turn on their decision to cut 52 ASL posts, including teachers. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that this vindicates strong action from the Scottish Government because it encourages Labour councils like DNG, who would not have done so, to commit to maintaining teacher numbers? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I certainly uh, welcome that news that um, Dumfries uh, and Galloway Council has uh, reconsidered uh, their earlier uh, proposals. Uh, that, of course, is good news. I'm sure it will be uh, warmly welcomed uh, across the Dumfries uh, and Galloway uh, area. Uh, as Ms McAlpine is uh, aware, uh, in the terms of the offer that we are making to each and every uh, local authority, uh, we are asking them uh, to assure a minimum uh, of the total number of teachers at 14-15 levels uh, to maintain the pupil-teacher uh, ratio for schools uh, as a maximum at the 14-15 uh, uh, levels uh, and that is very important uh, if we are to safeguard the education of our children as we move forward. Cameron Buchanan and finally Lord Smith. Thank you. Does the Scottish Government consider that education policy should focus on outcomes for students rather than centrally imposed targets? Cabinet Secretary. I very much uh, believe that we should be focused on uh, outcomes uh, for our children, uh, Mr uh, Buchanan. Um, but I think it's important to recognise that all the progress that we have made 
uh, in terms of attainment, in terms of school leaver destinations, uh, in terms of some of the uh, very important initiatives that are focused on children from the most deprived areas, that teachers have been at the absolute heart of that. And good quality teaching is absolutely central to the delivery uh, of education and indeed to improving outcomes uh, for our children. We can't do this uh, without uh, teachers. And I would agree with the EIS that teachers are indeed uh, our greatest asset in the education system. Well, Smith. Will the Scottish Government accept the recommendations of the GTC to remove the red tape which prevents some teachers yeah. applying in Scotland who come from south of the border or from yeah. other parts? Right. Right. I'm quite sure that Ms Smith is well aware that the GTCS is an independent body. It is independent of government uh, for uh, very good reasons. Uh, certainly in my dialogue um, with uh, local authorities, uh, the length and breadth of Scotland, there's certainly the feeling that some of the processes that they need to go through for very good reason to maintain teacher quality, that some of those processes could be uh, speeded up. Question number two, Neil Bibby to ask the Scottish Government whether it will consider introducing a pilot scheme for sale and consumption of alcohol at football matches. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Uh, drinking at football matches is a serious and complex issue. Uh, whilst the vast majority of football fans in Scotland are well behaved and a credit to their clubs, uh, the current policy on alcohol at football grounds was introduced for good reason. There has been a positive cultural shift in attitudes to alcohol in Scotland over the recent years, and we welcome this, but there is still much work to be done in this area. We therefore need to consider this issue very carefully. There are a variety of organisations, such as Police Scotland and Scottish Women's Aid, who strongly support the policy remaining as it is, given the marked increase in violent incidents which have been recorded in relation to some football matches. Watching Scottish football in a stadium should be a family-friendly experience and indeed has become a much more family-friendly pursuit since the introduction of the current alcohol policy. And it's important that we maintain a fun and safe environment for spectators. I am aware that other members of this parliament and the SFA have their own views and I would encourage them to continue in their dialogue with Police Scotland. Neil Bibby. The ban on alcohol was introduced in 1980 at football matches before I and hundreds of thousands of other football fans were even born. It's time to rethink this policy. The Minister will be aware that you can have a drink of alcohol at the rugby, at the theatre, at a music venue, and if you pay enough at football hospitality. Surely the Minister wouldn't say that ordinary football fans can't be trusted to have a drink. Surely it's time to look again at this blanket ban. Cabinet Secretary. I think uh, for the member to try and equate a football game with that of the theatre or a pop concert is actually stretching things a little uh, far. But he also uh, should reflect upon the fact that um, uh, the reason that the ban was introduced into rugby games was because the SRU actually volunteered to opt into that, despite the fact that there was no history of any difficulty at their games. Uh, so the history to it has to be recognised and it should be taken account of. But as I've uh, said, if the SFA and Police Scotland wish to have discussions about this, uh, then they should feel free to do so. I should say, as a football fan, as someone who regularly attends football matches with my young children, I find it easy enough to go 90 minutes without any alcohol. And I suspect most fans find that they're able to actually go 90 minutes without any alcohol. So I think we must treat this thing very carefully and seriously and not just simply turn it into a political football, which his party has done so. No, baby. I was at the St Mirren versus Inverness Cali game on Saturday and there was a clear majority of supporters, many of them families, Minister, uh, from both clubs who want the ban on alcohol lifted. In terms of his political points, Scottish Labour, the Scottish Conservatives, and can I remind the Minister, even many of his SNP government owned backbenchers, including Kenny McCaskill, the former uh, Justice Secretary, want the blanket ban to be looked at. And of course the police should have discretion. There is a groundswell of opinion in favour of this. Why does it appear that the SNP government ministers are against this proposal when a consultation and a pilot project hasn't even taken place? Cabinet Secretary. Well, clearly the member hasn't listened to what I just said, and that was that if the SFA and Police Scotland wish to have dialogue about this, which I know they already have been having dialogue about this, then I'm more than happy for that dialogue to take place and for them to explore this issue and to come forward with any uh, particular uh, proposals. 
What I would say is that uh, if the member thinks uh, standing outside Love Street speaking to some fans is some form of proper consultation, then I think he's pretty misguided in how you should undertake a consultation and engage with individuals. And as I've also said in the past, that given the serious nature of this, is if we are going to consult on this type of issue, and if the SFA want to consult on it, it has to be a thorough and proper one which goes well beyond just those who are attending football matches as well. And I think the member should also reflect on the fact that Scotland has a long-standing problem with its relationship with alcohol, something that costs the taxpayer some £3 billion per year. That's almost £900 for each taxpayer in Scotland. If we are to make sure that we continue to turn the tide in our relationship with alcohol to get it onto a more positive footing, then we need to be prepared to take forward policies that will deliver that. And this party has shown historically it's not been prepared to do that when it comes to issues like minimum pricing. Talking of St Mun, George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. And I regularly attend St Mun football games, but uh, the Cabinet Secretary may be aware that St Mun had a very successful fan zone within their grounds on a match day towards the end of last year. This proved to be very family friendly. Children played football, and there was an Xbox zone while adults also consumed alcohol. It was all part of an event uh, of which football was part of the alleged entertainment at that stage. Would the, the, uh, the Minister or the Cabinet Secretary support going down a route similar to the pilot that St Mun had with their fan zone? And does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that as this is quite an emotive subject, it may have been better for the Labour Party to back my call for a members debate in Scotland's Parliament to actually discuss this issue as opposed to chasing camera crews around football grounds? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, I'll, uh, I'll miss on the issue of the uh, entertainment on the pitch at uh, St Mirren Park uh, or commenting on it, and I'll leave that to George as a, a, a St Mirren fan. But I do recognise that George Adam has had a long-standing interest in this issue and has raised this matter on a number of occasions, uh, both with football authorities and uh, with police and with Scottish Government uh, ministers. I think St Mirren have uh, taken an approach which was around the, uh, uh, the fan zone, which was outside the restricted area for uh, alcohol that appears to have been successful. And if uh, uh, St Mirren uh, uh, appear inclined to continue to pursue that particular route, then it's open to them. What I do think is extremely important is that our football clubs recognise that they have to provide a family-friendly environment. It's not just about the fans of today, but it's about the fans of tomorrow as well. And that's about them making sure that the match day experience for the fans is a safe and it's a fun one. And I'm not entirely sure whether alcohol should play a large part in that. Thank you. We now move to the next item of business, which is a motion on motion number 12316 in the name of